it's kind of interesting when we talk about privilege and racism that most of the organizations are run by white men. Most of the boards are white men. Sometimes it, they want to dictate what you can and cannot do. And so when you are not willing to give in or to follow a certain agenda, then of course you know, you're not gonna get the funding that's needed. And so what does that mean for us, those that are involved, to have to carry um, the organization forward? You know, how do we do that? And so we're, we're in that place right now. Yeah, I'm president of the Royal Vagabond Foundation and Interesting that you bring that up. We just had our luncheon last weekend and um, Congresswoman Maxine Waters was our keynote speaker. And uh, it's been very successful. That has been uh, a pride and joy of mine to grow the organization and mainly to see the students, all students, uh, come and get their scholarship. We give away $1,000 plus uh, each student got a, a laptop computer um, that was worth $1,200 and then there were several students that were selected for what is called a legacy award so you know they got a nice sum of money as well. There are certain individuals that have to do certain things in order to maintain safety and so uh, the talk is very important for our, our black males and our sons and something that it must be done in order for our kids to, to arrive back home alive. At the time, they were looking for individuals who have given the talk to their sons or daughters, but mainly their sons. And uh, that was another interesting uh, process and project. The final uh, part of it was done actually in Memphis at the Civil Rights Museum. And so that was interesting because uh, they wanted to, they taped me as I was getting out the car when I arrived uh, at, the, at, the, at my hotel actually, taped me walking into the hotel and getting dressed for the activity. And I mean, it was just really, it gives you an insight as to what actors and actresses go through. Uh, I don't know how they could do it day in and day out, you know. Uh, I've been a part of an organization called uh, Within Our Lifetime. We have people from all walks of life that are in all types of careers, that have been involved um, in act activism and uh, have done all types of things that are part of Within Our Lifetime and organizations that have signed on. Within Our Lifetime came together after the Michael Brown uh, incident, the killing of Mike Brown. And there, were, there was an outcry around the United States, as, as you all know. And there were organizations that came together from around the U.S. to say, we want to end violence, we want to end racism within our lifetime. We meet kind of monthly uh, through, you know, thanks to social media. And uh, quarterly, we, we try to come together in person to create what this agenda looks like. Uh, what does it look like on the education front? What does it look like on the healthcare front? What does it look like you know, on some of the other fronts uh, to say we're going to end racism within our lifetime. When you get involved in a movement, uh, sometimes it's just for a moment. And I, won't, I would say that a, a movement can't be for a moment. It's going to be, it has to be for a lifetime. It has to be something that you get in and you, you grind and you're going to have the ups and downs and you take, um, you know, you take the, the challenges uh, with the triumphs and uh, you make it happen. And that's real important that you just stick to it. You know, many people, many young people I find, they want immediate gratification. And certainly there's a sense of urgency, but immediate gratification doesn't come all the time. It comes with just being in there, having the drive, having the determination, stay the course. You know, if you look at how the civil rights movement happened, it wasn't overnight. There were people that stayed the course, and so I always say you have to have that stick to itness uh, to make it happen. Mm -hmm.